Good afternoon and welcome to today's edition of Democracy and the Rule of Law, a program where we'll take a look at topical national issues from the perspective of the rule of law and the constitution. My name is Judith Renoir and on today's edition of the program, we're taking a look at uh, the enforcement of the lockdown, the river state scenario. And this is thus the river state governor, Yesom Wiki, last Sunday supervised the demolition of two hotels for flouting the COVID-19 preventive directive in the state. The demolition of the hotels, Prudent Hotel, and Etemete Hotel on Air were carried out in the early hours of Sunday, May 10. The governor inferred in a statement that one of the hotels belongs uh, to a member of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, the same party from which he emerged as governor. Wicket tweeted uh, that his decision is not discriminatory because he had earlier ordered the shutdown of hotel operations across the 23 local government areas of the state. The governor said he uh, had no alternative but to apply the executive order which he signed before the lockdown of uh, Obiakwo, uh, Obiakwo and Port Harcourt. He called on the traditional rulers and council chairmen and told them to ensure that no hotel operate in the state. Uh, the governor emphasized that though the lockdown, uh, the order was meant to be temporary, it was designed to reduce the figure of confirmed cases and to check the virus spread. And this is what we'll be taking a look at on today's edition of the program. The exec executive order, uh, which uh, Governor Yesem Wike referred to in this statement, what an executive order is and uh, the limitations of an executive order. Before we uh, introduce, uh, before I introduce our guest, let's take a look at um, what the governor said and the demolition exercise on itself. So with us. We are not saying that it is forever. At least for now, so that we know where we are, how the number, the index cases, whether we can reduce it. And people do not believe that. So that's what we are doing. Well, whether you are PDP or not, all we are saying, nobody's above the law. If we can do this to a PDP member, then you will know that we are not discriminating. So everybody must obey. If whether you are in PDP, whether you are in SDP, whether you are no party, the, rule, the law is now is do not do this, don't carry out this business as it is now. So it won't because you're a PDP member and therefore you will not obey what the law says. No, we will not agree to that. All right, and we just listened to the governor of uh, uh, River State, ESM Weekend, speaking shortly after he supervised the demolition of those hotels. And also we saw the demolition exercise right there, which took place uh, last Sunday. And now let's, um, let me quickly introduce our guest, Barista Kinsley Chime, you're welcome. Thank you so much, and good afternoon, viewers. All right, and uh, our first time, uh, Barista Elvis Asia, it's nice to have you. Thank you. All right, Nigerians are divided over Wiki's demolition of these two hotels in uh, River State in a bid to enforce uh, the lockdown order he placed in the state. Those two local governments, to be precise, Obiapo and Port Harcourt, you know, uh, in a bid to uh, reduce the spread of um, community transmission of the coronavirus. Now, on which side are you? Are you uh, on the side of those who refer to this as executive recklessness? or those who see it as um, a governor trying to protect the state at all costs. What side are you, Barista uh, Elvis? On, on the side of the rule of law. Mm. Um, essentially, um, the governor has the right uh, to make regulations and issue orders with respect to ensuring that a pandemic, such as what we have now, does not uh, create serious problems for the citizen. And that's, no, nobody is disputing that. Mm. But in doing so, you have to uh, do so within the confines of the law. Uh, you cannot be, you cannot say because you want to uh, you know, prevent the spread of uh, coronavirus, you, you can't you can't become reckless. You have to do so within the, the confines of the law. Mm. So, in essence, you're saying he has not acted and within the confines of the law, despite the executive order, which the, the, he says he's relying on. The demolition is clearly executive uh, recklessness. Uh, okay. Yes. Clear your constitution, and it's uh, very sad that such uh, action will come from the governor who is a lawyer. Mm. 
All right, a week is demolition of the hotels in the state over alleged violation of uh, his lockdown order. How do you see Barista Chief? Um, <laughs> thank you so much. I think um, no uh, reasonable person I know, would uh, justify or have any justification for the conduct or actions of uh, Governor Wiki. It is really unconstitutional. It runs foul of uh, extant laws. That is to say, it's against the, the, the tenets of the Constitution. Uh, Wiki didn't uh, observe the principles of natural justice, mm. which ordinarily allows, expect, uh, he's expected to ensure that um, he does not become a judge in his own case and that he gives reasonable uh, fair hearing to the accused persons. Mm. Here, um, the Constitution, particularly Section 36 and Section 43, gives citizens right to be heard and right to own movable and immovable properties. The same thing is also replicated in Article 7 and 14 of the African Charter on Human Rights. So these rights are there to protect citizens. For whatever reason, yes, we can, uh, may be right you know, in alleging that those hoteliers or the management of those hotels has run or have run foul of the extant executive order which is an offshoot of an emergency legislation from, um, from the state uh, houses of, House of Assembly. So what Mwike ought to have done is to charge those uh, people or those hoteliers who were found um, breaching the, the, the directive of the governor. So but for him to go all out to become an accuser and then uh, constitute himself into a court of competent jurisdiction found those people wanting and convicted them by demolishing their properties. Mm. It is unconstitutional, it is unjustifiable, it cannot be reasonably expected in a democratic society. And uh, to imagine that uh, Governor Winky with due respect to him, is a lawyer and a life venture to indulge in this kind of um, executive rascality, like you said, it cannot be supported by any known law in the land. All right, Barista Elvis, let's take a look at um, this issue of executive order. When you, make, uh, when you say executive order, most Nigerians don't really um, know what it means if you're not uh, really into all that. So can you just break it down for us? What is an executive order and what is the limitation of an executive order? Thank you. Um, an executive order simply is a directive uh, from the executive branch of government to that branch of government on how government intends to implement the laws. Uh, it's basically a, a statement of principle on the, from, the gov from the executive governor in the case of the state or from the uh, president in the case of uh, the, 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 the federation. So executive are basi basically are basically directives from the governor on how the way and manner laws to be enforced and implemented. Mm -hmm. In this case, Wiki, um, you know, predicated his executive order on the Quarantine Act. Section 2, 3, 4, I think, and 8 of that legislation. Mm. But if you look at that legislation, it will be clear that the, there's nothing there that gives a governor uh, any power, or even the president, the power to demolish properties. Um, the, 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 the act simply gives the governor, in the in, in, in event the president hasn't made a law, or hasn't made a regulation in this case, as it was in the rivers, mm. the act simply gives the governor to go ahead to make a, a, a regulation. You can call it an order, you can call it a regulation on the way and manner the pandemic can be contained within an area that has been declared to be an infectious uh, uh, disease area, you know. And if you look at that law, for example, like uh, uh, my, my friend here was saying, the law, there's a punishment, there's, there's a provision in the law, Section 5 of that legislation, prescribes punishment for failure to uh, um, um, follow the directives the governor gives or the president gives punishment to that law. The punishment is very simple, 200 naira or not more than six months imprisonment. And then you go further, there's a provision in section, section 7 that says you have to go to the magistrate court to enforce such a regulation, okay. to enforce such an order. So if, for example, the governor gives a directive on how uh, the procedure, the way manner he intends to curtail the pandemic such as what we have now, if there's a violation of that, of that order or that regulation, what the, the governor can do is to go to the magistrate court to enforce it. Okay. And I mean, how can the demolition of the property uh, reasonably uh, be, be, be considered to be an attempt to 
uh, 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 prevent the spread of, of the virus. It, it doesn't really, um, you know, what, what, we, what we saw in rivers is something that is not, is not contemplated under the law. And the, the members of the public and, uh, shouldn't consider that to be an act, you know, done portion to a valid uh, uh, order, you know, made by the government. An executive order is nothing more than a directive. It, does, it's not, it's, it, it cannot, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not a, it, it doesn't amount to punishment. Okay. What he has done now is to prescribe, okay, he has given directives or, you know, uh, he has given guidelines on how uh, the people should behave with respect to containing this pandemic. He has passed the judgment. He has enforced it. But that is not done in any it's democracy. It's supposed to be this uh, case. Exactly. An executive order is um, like you... It's just a directive, directive and guidelines on how... The governor, yeah. And when it is breached, it, it, the onus now lies on the judicial arm of government. Uh, exactly. He should have to approach the court. The law, yeah. that, the law is acting for sure to say you should go to the magistrate court. Mm. You should have go to the magistrate court to enforce it. Not to, you know, become so rascally... I mean, it's, it's, it's really very yeah, sad. If I can quickly okay, add, quickly chip in, that, yeah? um, just <laughs> for me to lay the proper foundation, mm. that the, it, I'm not holding brief for the hoteliers or the management of the hotel or the government of River State, but just to put the record straight, the Constitution did not allow the governor. Governor is a, we are operating a separation of power in this country, a democratic society, where the executive the legislature and the judiciary all have their own respective roles. So what Wiki has done, in fact, I wish the management of the hotel will take uh, legal action against the government of River State because even under the Land Use Act, even under the Section 43 and 44, or even 45 of the Constitution that guarantees right to own properties, there are circumstances under which that law can be derogated upon. One of those um, conditions is that you have acquired uh, the property, government that is compulsory acquisition by the government when proper compensation has been paid. And of course, the individual, the owner of the property, must be given a notice of uh, acquisition mm -hmm. and the reason behind it. And of course, it must be acquired for public uh, purposes or interest. Of course, if you look at what is played out, it appears uh, Wiki said he was going to convert that site to primary to school. school yes, yeah. to look like um, it was acquired for public purposes or the interest of the public as envisaged by law. But that is purely not the position. Mm. Wiki cannot be a judge. A principle of natural justice, we have twin principles of natural justice that talks about Nemo Judas in Kasasua and Audio Autorem Patem, which simply means that listen from both sides of your ears, and you cannot condemn anyone except that person has been tried. So what Wiki, even devil himself, deserves his day in court. So Wiki, yes, I understand his concerns. He may have genuine reasons, you know, but I think he actually went overboard. So we have to confine ourselves to the, to the law. Yes, the law is there. He alleged that someone has breached the law, but it doesn't lie on him to go for that to you know levy execution on uh, someone's property all right continue. now we have established the fact that um he he's acted in contravention of um, the rule of law okay. and the constitution okay. now the governor like he, he said uh, we rightly said uh the land we on which those hotels sat earlier will now be used to build a school and now we're saying that these lands have not been legally confiscated because due process was not followed. So what would now happen when uh, public fund is expended on building these uh, this schools? What do you think will be right, the, the right thing to do in this case? Well, you see, this is one, 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 one of the uh, one cases that is really quite uh, disturbing. Mm -hmm. um, I think the reason why the government is saying that he wants to build a school there is perhaps to get public sentiment and public sympathy uh, for his uh, unconstitutional action. And it's, 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 it's clearly not done. Just like my other friend said, the constitution is clear. Now, under section 44, where you can derogate from some of the, some of the, the, the right to property, uh, there's a provision there that says that if the property is injurious, uh, you know, uh, to, to public health. Public but safety. what the law says is that you take possession. You don't demolish it. And before you can even take possession and acquire it or whatever, you have to go through the process of law. Exactly. You know, so it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that 
the governor has done something uh, uh, wrong by simply saying, oh, I want to convert it to a public uh, uh, institution. That, 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 that it doesn't work. If you want to acquire somebody's property, of course, the governor has a power, just like you also said, under the, under the Land Use Act, to acquire property right. for, purpose, for public purposes. I mean, you can, even, if, uh, even if it's your building, the, the governor can decide to say, look, I want to acquire it. I want to build a school here. I want to... Now, in doing so, you have to follow lay down guidelines. First, you have to do compensation. First, you have to, and the property, will, of course, will have to be valued so that you can pay, you know, the, the market value for the property. You cannot just wake up, take somebody's property under the guise of, oh, there are people uh, violating an order. Even that order, such an order, if it if, if claims to act portion to an order, that, even that order is not valid. It's not, a, it's, not, it's not a valid order. And so nobody is uh, actually bound by an order that is not valid. So the fact that he wants to convert it to the uh, public, uh, what about he, what, you see, what the hotel owners should do is very clear. They should go to court. Even if it takes, of course, the problem we have in the, in the country is that the judicial process takes a, it takes a long time. Quite slow. And, and a lot of that is quite <laughs> slow. But, you know, that doesn't stop, that shouldn't stop you from, you know, pursuing your rights. Even if you, if you do the school there, whatever, there's a principle of law. Whatever you, or land belongs to the person who owns the land. Even if you build this, a skyscraper there as a, as a public, uh, whatever, okay. if the moment he gets a decision of court, it reverts back. And obviously, the court will award serious damages against River State for all the properties that, that were destroyed there. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, let's. Um, I, I saw a video where um, a member of the task force, uh, according to uh, that, that video, he alleged that um, when they went to the hotel to actually uh, try to enforce the shutting down of the particular mm -hmm. hotel after uh, the lockdown was violated and so on, they were attacked by the owners of uh, that uh, uh, hotel. Probably that spurred the, the governor. The reaction, and, of, the uh, yeah, the reaction of, of, of the governor. And uh, we've also heard reports of those who insisted that these owners of these hotels were warned several times before the governor took that drastic action, probably to serve as a deterrent to other hoteliers in River State. What do you make of that? Yes, if that is uh, the position, um, it is condemnable, uh, but that's notwithstanding, that does not give the governor the power to take the extreme measure or the action he has taken in the circumstance. Yes, if those, uh, it's, it's surprising to me that a law validly made by state legislation uh, is being trampled upon and the governor has to send, you know, people to go and warn. I have never seen a situation where citizens are warned, you know, to desist from doing an illegal act. By doing or by opening, you know, such hotels is in violation of an existing or the existing law, which they can be charged against. They could also be charged for, of course, malicious, um, whatever damages, or you know, the, any of the criminal laws of river states, you know, to justify that aspect. But you know, what Mike did, he was actually trying to do the right thing in a wrong way. That's exactly what played out. Mm. Yeah, he may have good intentions, you know, in order to secure his state and to ensure that this uh, virus does not go, you know, out of hand. But in doing so, the law has prescribed a bold use of parody upon which those mechanisms must be ventilated. Because what Mwike did, he complained, just like, of course, I read other versions of the story from the hoteliers saying there was no such thing. Mwike is saying a different thing. Who do we believe? So it, it requires a court of competent jurisdiction to hear both sides in, a, in order to come to a conclusion. The issue of um, fair hearing, it predates man. Like the popular saying, even in the scriptures, in the Bible, that God, even though he saw Adam you know, and Eve, he never condemned them. He gave them the opportunity for them to defend themselves. That is the root of these principles of natural justice. So ordinarily, what Mwike has done or has intended to do may be right, but he chose the wrong step. And in doing so, he violated the rights of those hoteliers. Their right, their constitutional right to own properties had been violated. And if they go to court, I'm sure they'll be able to get adequate compensation. Mm. All right, let's um, just take an overview of uh, Wike's uh, style of enforcing the lockdown in River State. I have seen him personally, I've seen videos of him personally uh, uh, 
ensure the arrest of some people who are flouting uh, the, the restriction of movement, you know, I've seen a barricade built on a road, you know, just to ensure uh, interstate um, traveling is not, um, it's not ongoing in uh, River State. What do you make of a style of enforcing the lockdown order? It's part of the whole picture of uh, executive rascality, um, like what we are seeing in, in River State. If you want to enforce a lockdown, there are security agencies charged with that duty. What you should do is empower them to make sure they do their duty. I saw a video of Wiki, for example, uh, shouting at a, a, a pregnant lady. Uh, you know, I, I mean, you don't, you don't do that in a, in a decent society. I'm not trying to justify the fact that people were going about violating the order, um, you know, validly made by, by the governor. But the style of enforcement is clearly unconstitutional. If you think that people are in violation or in breach of an order or a directive, or you have given respect to the enforcement of the lockdown in an attempt to prevent or reduce the spread of this virus, what you should do is to empower the, the, the security agencies. Get them arrest, arrest people and then charge them to court. The law portion to which you are issuing an order has given it, you know, it, the, you know, there's a procedure clearly stated under that law that says you should approach the magistrate court to enforce any fine under the law to enforce any directive under the law, to enforce any punishment under the law. So you cannot just go about, I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a general problem we have in our society where people think that because they have power, you know, they can uh, just be rascal about it. They can do whatever it, whatever they please. It, is, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't come from a governor. It shouldn't come from a governor and most importantly, a governor who is a lawyer. Um, I mean, there are enforcement mechanisms that, I mean, if governors get all sort of uh, security votes on a daily basis, you empower the security agencies to go and do their work. Why do you want to show the world? Why do you want to demonstrate power? You don't need to demonstrate power. You know, what you need to do is to enforce the law. And in fact, what you are doing is uh, to antagonize people. If you look at this it started since the beginning of, of, of this lockdown, of, of this problem, you know, it's been antagonizing people, antagonizing federal government. Look, you see, I can understand if you have a problem with people. I can understand if you have a problem with the federal government or whoever. But the point is, when lives, you know, are, you know lives, the lives of your, of your citizens are at stake, you should come down uh, from your high horse and, and work together with the people, you know, uh, to, to make sure that the, uh, the, the rule of law is obeyed. Your business as a governor is to, is, to, is, to, is to obey the rule of law. You cannot, because you want to uh, enforce an order that, I mean, the way he even goes about talking about the order, as if it's, it means life and, and death for the people. Perhaps people should, people should die by the order rather than, rather than dying from the virus. So I think, you know, rather than, uh, yes, you want to, you, it's, it's good that you are, you, are, you are passionate about trying to uh, uh, curtail the spread of the virus, but in doing so, you, you can't you can keep people. Well, well, prior to this, uh, to, to this demolition exercise, which um, some people uh, did describe as uh, going the extreme, many people are of the view that uh, VK is actually uh, very, very, very active in trying to curtail the spread of this virus. Like he's been at the forefront, um, ensuring interstate uh, travel ban is enforced. While some states, we see the fact that. Uh, Interstate traveling is still going on. Nothing has been done. The security agents are on the roads, and still people <coughs> travel back and forth. Um, Barista Chime, yes. <laughs> what do you make I, I of think, this? I uh, think, with <laughs> respect to your opinion, mm. uh, uh, and um, to, to build, uh, with due respect to Mwiki, and uh, to be modest, you know, I think um, there is nothing wrong in his approach in coming physically to uh, either supervise or even assist the enforcement of uh, the lockdown, that is inter and interstate travel, mm. which was restricted at the time. So it was really not, uh, for me, I do not see it as a show of force or show of, um, you know, trying to display his powers. But uh, perhaps, you know, he is the chief executive officer of that government. He is the chief security officer as a matter of law, you know. So he has the responsibility to protect the lives and the properties of citizens, of people of River State. I think that is what he had demonstrated. He has actually demonstrated uncommon leadership qualities. You know, it, days are gone when, you know, he, may, he could have decided to sit back in his office or his home and, and be dishing instructions. And of course, if you look at the trajectory of these lockdowns, in you know, all the states that have uh, imposed kind of lockdowns, 
there are porous uh, places, particularly in the border axis, where security, even the security agencies themselves are complicit. So I'm sure what he did was more of an impressionist approach in order to create the impression that there is no sacred cow. You, you see that you obey this, um, the law duly made, or you face the consequences. And of course, he has also shown that he said uh, able and capable. So there is actually nothing wrong, say to say, in uh, coming out to physically be on site where these lockdowns have been um, enforced. The only issue I have is the approach or how he took the law into his own hands and began to, uh, you know, administer justice in his own uh, thinking. So generally, by and large, you know, with respect to him, there is absolutely nothing wrong with his approach. Well, uh, Vicky is actually uh, has remained unapologetic uh, for any of his actions he has taken so far. So believes that um, he's on the right track and. He must be firm rather than compromise in the fight against uh, the pandemic that will put resident citizens in the state in great danger. If you're not agreeing with his own approach, what would you rather he did, you know, to ensure those citizens, his uh, res uh, the, the, the people he governs, are safe? What would you rather he well, do? Well, the, the, the truth about that is that, um, yes, why it is true that there are instances where uh, you may have to do, you know, take some extra measures to ensure that a virus such as this is contained. Um, there are basic steps you need to take to, you know, in a virus situation. For example, um, I don't know, I don't have the statistics. Um, how many hospitals, are, you know, do we have in River State that are prepared that are able to take care of people who have, you know, who come down with, with this virus? I mean, those are, that's, that, that should be the. I, I watch regularly what happens elsewhere. Even when you say that in New York, where you have you know thousands of people dying on a daily, hundreds of people dying on a daily basis, thousands of people being infected on a daily basis, and I listen to the, the, the governor, the governor there, and I see what they talk about. What they talk about essentially, are, oh, what how many best space do we have? How many people were infected today? How do we you know uh, 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 ensure that we have hospitals? How do we source for funds for the federal government? How do we get the assistance of the federal government? I mean, the, the, the federal government there to you know, assist the state in ensuring that the, the, the problem. Antagonizing at, at everybody is not going to really solve any problem. Mm. You know, I mean, the state, those states, God forbid we, we are faced with a serious situation. No state can actually do it all alone. You can't just go about antagonizing people. Look at the basics. You know, what, how many ventilators do we have in university? I, I don't have this. I can't say they don't, we don't have it, but I don't have the statistics. But those are the things, those are the things that should, you know, uh, a government should be concerned about. When it comes to enforcement of law, you know, um, yes, you are right when you say that uh, there are porous borders across the country. Uh, people are still moving around. Uh, and, of course, you know, that's the, that's the general problem of corruption in this country when people keep the security agents, the officers, and they're able to move around. Now, there's literally nothing. Um, yeah, the government can, uh, you know, make some attempt. But what, what is it going to do, really? There are so many point, uh, entry points to River State. Uh, it's not going to be... The, the, or, or, or the what well, you should do is to demonstrate. For example, how do you demonstrate? In, in, in Lagos, for example, we heard of a case where a popular uh, artist, uh, actress was arrested, charged to court. That's, how you, well, that's what you do. You showcase it so that people can see that you are enforcing the law. You don't have to show power to do that. If you, okay, in, in, I, I don't know, I, I, I won't see all the videos. If you look at some of those videos, for example, I don't see, I didn't see them arresting anybody who, who, have, who, who violated the, the, the lockdown. I just saw them shouting and insulting people. I don't think that's, 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 that's what you should do. What the government should do is to ensure that you enforce the law. If, uh, if, 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 if you went there to oversee arrest, for example, and they were arrested, they were charged in magistrate court, I was, I was celebrating. But the way it was shouting, the way it was, I don't think we should exercise executive power that, that way. I, I think this is a democracy. I think we are, we are, we are still within the confines of the rule of law. Uh, we, have to, we, we just have to be careful. Because this is a feature, it's a societal problem. Everybody that has power wants to showcase it. You don't have to do that. Arrest people, charge them to the magistrate court, just like the law says. And, you know, advertise it. Let it be on newspapers, let it be on the news, like they did with, uh, uh, in Lagos. That way you, 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 you scare people from violating the law. They even do it abroad. You see them arresting stars, you know, for drunk driving, things like that. But you don't see people going on the road and then say, oh, you come down. Oh, where are you going? And then you, you, you'll see where, anyway. 
but you you got to carry. Also giving the right instruction, exactly. probably. But, I mean, <laughs> why do you have to do that to mm. show power? Get people arrested for violating the order. Charge them to court. I don't have a problem with that. That is what a governor should do. That is the business of governance. Charge them to court. Make sure that the the, the proceedings of court is televised, and everybody in your state, you know, they, they, they see it. That way, they, they are detached from from. You you, you say uh, yeah. he's uh, like showing power, but how about we say it this way? He is uh, leading by example. He's been in the forefront just to give a boost to security uh, agents. You recall, prior to that um, uh, video we saw where Wiki was enforcing uh, movement restriction, he had accused um, the, the police in the state of complicity, you know, of accepting bribes and allowing people, you know, break the restriction of movement. Don't you see it in that in the light? You see, I don't have, I, I, I agree with you that we have, uh, a, you know, a, a corrupt system. Right, security agencies are corrupt. They they are, they, are, they are being bribed for people to flout the law. In fact, in most cases, they celebrate you know enactments of laws, not necessarily because they want to enforce it, but because it's going to further their next. But the point is, show example, right? If you get for it, I mean, can't a police officer be arrested for for for, for bribery? If for what was talking, I said we had evidence of a security personnel who was bribed. Where is that security personnel? Why was he not arrested? Why was he not charged to court? These are, these are the kind of questions I'm asking. Okay. Because you can't just talk about these things. Because anybody can make noise. Yeah. You know, when you just are making noise like that, that's not governance, that's activity. Mm. The real governance come, you come down to real governance. You say somebody was bribed. You are, a governor is saying that. That means you have evidence. No governor should just go about saying somebody was bribed without evidence. Then you arrest the person. Charge the person to court. Televise it. Let everybody see it. Oh. That would, you know, discourage people from, from violating the law. Oh, very well. I, I get yeah, that. Yeah, just, just for a second. <laughs> Beyond the small screen mm. lies the political undertone. You know, yes, we can talk about all these things based on what the law says and how we feel about it. But beyond this uh, small screen, there is a show of power, a kind of conflict of power between the government of River State and the federal government. Mm. There is a total loss of confidence on the um, uh, security agencies. You know, of course, the security agencies are accountable to the president, you know, the Inspector General of Police. So we keep uh, is feeling that uh, this uh, directive is not being obeyed or mm. complied by agents of the federal government. This is the foundation of this crisis okay. yes so it has it absolutely has nothing to do with even the hoteliers or the people that were being arrested on the screens of television but in order to create an impression to the federal government that this is my territory you can do anything you want to do in your own area. You don't come to my territory and dictate what happens to me. This is exactly what. And is that supposed out. to be the case? Of mm. course, it shouldn't. It's just that a politician would take these policies, you know, a little bit too far, mm. because politics is about people. You have been interested in serving people, you know, protecting your people, not really, you know, trying to, you know, psych or romance your own personal egos. You know, so it should be about people. And if it's about people, there shouldn't be anything like federal government or state government because you see the same people that forms these agencies of government. Mm. All right, and, and moving on uh, from this particular topic, Boris Elvis, how do you think? I know we've learned a whole lot of lessons during this um, lockdown and uh, the enforcement of the lockdown. Moving on, uh, what do you think needs to be in place to ensure? The river situation, which many have condemned, does not replicate, replicate in other parts of the country. How do we begin well, to well, prepare? Well, well the, the, you know, I mean, um, what I can say here, uh, I'm not an expert in med medical science and other areas where we really need to up our game, you know, in an attempt to prepare for pandemics and ensure that we don't have situation. But what is important is that people should just follow the rule of law. Um, it is very easy to enforce the law, particularly when um, you, the, the Magistrate Court, for example, uh, which has jurisdiction over issues uh, like this, based on the existing law, is within the control of the state. Uh, the, 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 the Magistrate Court within the state is financed by the state. So you can easily enforce this law. You can get any magistrate to hear these cases as quickly as possible. We, in Lagos, for example, we, we hear of, case, of mobile courts, you know, in some cases, uh, have been